Hey everyone, happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. I hope your week is going well. For us in the DMV area, this is like the last week of freedom before school starts. So I hope you are using it very well. I am for sure. <laughs> so if you're coming in and you don't know who is this lady in red lips, well, I am Melissa Jake. I am CEO and founder of Rescue Event Planning, and I am here every Wednesday. I do hashtag Ask Melissa Wednesdays. I am your guru of live events, um, and I like to bring um, some free content to you about event planning and um, different ways to utilize different type of aspects to help your event planning. If you are an entrepreneur or if you are an aspiring event planner, this also helps you as well. Hey, hey, thank you for joining. So I always tell everybody that, listen, when you come in, you have to do at least one thing. <laughs> at least say, hey, hey, girl, hey, how you doing? Hi. And then you have to share. So that's that's like one of my must, must do's. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, I watched your lives. But I'm like, oh, you do? I haven't seen you join in. Let me know you're here. I want to know you're here. So say, hey, 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 girl. Hey, 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 thank you. So I'm about to join in myself on my phone. So you might hear the little pop up there. Um, here I am. I found myself. <laughs> That's like one of my must, must do. So perfect. All right. So now I'm going to share. If you're sharing, I'm sharing. We're all sharing. And sharing is caring. So I totally appreciate it. I'm going to share it to a couple of my groups. Um, oh, did I share that? Let's see. And then we're going to get down to it. Oh, it posted. Perfect. Perfect. Um, then I want to tag. Can I tag my own self? Is that possible? Let's see. I don't think you can. All right, and that's fine. Okay. All right, thank you for joining us. If you're coming in, let me know where you're from. I want to know if you're in the DMV area, which we call um, Maryland, uh, Virginia, and DC, or DC, Maryland, Virginia, whichever way you want to put it. Uh, but put in the state, uh oh, the state that you're in. So I'm knocking my chair around here. Um, the state that you're in, where you're coming from. Thank you. I'm, oh, yes. You guys haven't seen me since. I'm back to my Melissa, I call it. During the summertime, you guys, um, for all those who are who are natural, um, I, I can't do. Imagine this, like, in Jamaica and Ocean City. That just would not be what's up. It would be a big poof, right? So um, I always do some type of protective style during the summer. And so since summer is kind of ending in my book, even though the calendar doesn't say so, I'm back to my natural hair. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Alabama, that's what's up. Um, I used to have an uncle that lives in Mobile, Alabama. So that's what's up. Perfect, perfect, you guys. So I'm precise and concise. I don't like to hold people up too much, but I like to give the goods, right? So we're going to talk about three ways to use volunteers for your next live event. So if you have a, if you do have a live event, I'm all about um, sharing and caring for others. So post your event as well, like your event flyer if you can, or at least a link to your event because you don't know who this may reach. And they may purchase your ticket, so don't leave an opportunity on the table. <laughs> yes, Melissa is back. <laughs> All right, so three ways to use volunteers for your next live event. The first way is using volunteers as your production team. So let's say you really don't have a staff. You don't have um, either partners or staff members that can really help you, right? And so production team is exactly what it's called. Those are your grinders who are behind the scenes, making sure speakers are coming off, speakers are going on, asking them to drink water, what is their preference. Um, if you're doing like a fundraiser activity, that would be um, those production team members will help with the flow of like for vendors. So when I think fundraiser, I think balloons, um, clowns, uh, face painters, those type of things, caterers for food, water stations. You have a lot of things going on for a fundraiser. And then there might be that area of like where they're actually fundraising money. 
And so you need somebody to help with all of that. You may not be able to have a staff, but volunteers love to volunteer their time. And so for production, for production team, you want to keep in mind that you don't want to overwork them, right? This is not a paid gig for them. So you have to keep in mind that um, you can't overwork your people, but you can do shifts. Usually two to three hours is a good time. I like to push a limit with four um, because if, especially if you like have an all day thing, it's like an eight hour thing that gives you shift one, shift two. But if your event is smaller, let's say it's four hours, I would do two hours for one, two hours for two. Put them in different shifts because then they don't feel like they're overworked. Um, because volunteers, they are doing it for free, right? And so that is key. You don't want to make sure, you want to make sure that they're happy of volunteer, their spirits are still up because production is hard. Getting people in places where they're supposed to be, starting on time, is the audio right? There's feedback in the audio. And so your production team helps you with that. So that is one way of utilizing volunteers for that. But the second way is hosting team. So this is like your registration, people coming into the door. Um, usually you see this at weddings when we ask, do you have hostesses for your wedding? Those are the nice greeters that are saying, hey, welcome. How are we doing? Oh, we could take your gift for you. Um, sorry, my husband happens to be printing while I'm doing a Facebook Live. <laughs> sorry, you hear that noise because I'm hearing it. So those are your your hosting um, your hosting team. Yeah, and I just told everybody that you decided to print while I'm doing my Facebook Live. <laughs> and it's work. It's work. It's work. We're all working. And we don't have the baby girl because we sent her to Nana and Pop Up. So we're happy about that. Well, they are there for the week. Anywho, back to our hosting team, right? So for our hosting team, um, that's your greeter. So that's like, hey, how are you doing? Welcome to the Olivia Pope of Live Events. We're so excited for you to be here. The bathroom is here. Maybe take your um, your coat, whichever thing. You want them to feel like genuinely, I'm excited. Those are your energetic people. So if you have people who are like, girl, I see you doing your thing. Let me know if you ever need help. Those are the folks, and if you really know who they are, those are the folks that you really want to have on your front line because that gets the energy level up for your guests. So hosting team is number two. Number three is your street team. Um, I use a lot of this. Uh, I use a lot of these type of folks at Morgan when I was um, SGA president. I had a street team for all my events. Um, so to get the word out, you know, back then social media really wasn't big. So I had them post flyers all over the place behind the bathroom. Um, stall so if you're using the bathroom boom the flyers right there there's the event so i had a street team post flyers and stuff like that um we kind of get away from that a lot because we feel like oh i'm just going to post on social media let me just post on social media don't forget about that on the street where you see the the party promoters are perfect for this they're going to the post and putting putting the staples onto the post and so you're walking down the street or if you're at a bus stop it says take that little number looking for an apartment take a little number there don't forget about those things because that is still vital um one of my clients that i'm i'm helping with uh, with valicia she does a fashionably chic tour and her tour is going to be actually I'm sorry. <laughs> Live at five. <laughs> what are you looking for? Papers right there. Right there. Look at the yellow bag. There you go. Paper. Okay. So your street team are your grinders, and they are making sure that um, those are. I was talking about Valicia. She has a fashionably chic tour where basically you're joining the tour and um, think of a tour guide and going to different um, spots that she has vetted are very well known for their either their uh, jewelry, their makeup, their clothing, their hats, their tees. It all speaks around Paris for that thing that she's doing. And so her street team is making sure that the flyers are in those boutiques. Flyers are in the restaurants that she has partnered up with and along those strip. So, and reaching out to like hotels and making sure hotels have flyers as well. That's what a street team does. Now, it sounds like a lot of work, right? But you're gonna separate your 
um, street team according to where they live. So you want to pick people who are near those areas. And if they're near there, then you're like, hey, are you going to take one hour out of the day to ensure this happens and to ensure that happens? So that is what a street team does. Um, you have to be very strategic with it because it is grinding work. All of these uh, positions are grinding work, but you want to ensure that your volunteers are, are happy with what they're doing. They're happy that they're part of your project and that they're not overworked, that they start getting sloppy. A lot of people are fearful of that. I don't want my volunteers to get sloppy, right? So how do you do that? So I wrote down a couple of things. Some things are having, um, some people start having paid volunteers and non-paid volunteers. So what does that mean? So they will send out a form, like a Google form, and the paid volunteers are that they do an investment. They invest like, let's say, $25 to be a volunteer part of this event. Uh, this is, you know, I say utilize this method when you're more establishing your event. Um, for example, uh, the hair show that happens in D.C. every year, I think they're in their fifth year, Ebiquitous, maybe jacking that up. But they have a hair show at the convention center down in D.C. every year. And they're always looking for volunteers. Um, I don't think I don't I don't believe they do this, but they might. You might want to put a fee on it. The reason why we say that is there's been plenty of times I had clients have events or have been a part of events where they had a list of 30 volunteers and maybe only five showed up. That jacks up your whole schedule for the day, right? How can you ensure that these volunteers actually show up? Because it is free. They don't have to come. If the weather changes, oh, I double booked myself, or I really wasn't going to do it anyway, but I just said I was going to do it. You get those folks, right? But if they put some skin in the game, some investment in that you're going to be a part of it, um, then they're like most likely to come. Another way to say is that some of this fee goes towards your T-shirt. So you're a part of the team. You have your branding on your T-shirt, but it says volunteer on the back, right? So that is an idea as well. Um, another way is having a lunch. Having a lunch with them before the event, that is a great way as well, because then they feel appreciated. You're going about the overview of the event, what's happening, but they also have lunch. People love food. I know I do. So feeding folks is a great way as well. Um, and in your event, if you have the space and the capacity, having like a volunteer room, like just to take a break. And that can also be for your speakers and your um, your hosts, um, your moderators, your panelists, having a room where it has like water, granola bars, little chips. And then, you know, if you're able to have like actual catered meal or lunch boxes, those are a great way, like from Panera lunch boxes or creating your own lunch box is a great idea as well to save funds. That is a way to make sure we appreciate you. Thank you so much, right? So having lunch is great. Um, the other thing is to ensure that volunteers don't get sloppy is make sure they know everything that you know in your brain. It's your event, and that's awesome. But having it all appear and not having it written down is a different thing. And having it ex explained to the team is a different thing. I would have a webinar uh, one, and I would have a earlier call time for the volunteers to go over it again the day of. That will ensure that it happens. So, um, and when I talk about the day of, you are the host. So let's say, Melissa, I'm hosting an event, right? And I'm expecting 100 people. I'm not really the one talking to the volunteers the day of. You should still have some type of partner, some type of staff involved, because it's going to be so many things going on the day of. You can't focus on those little things. That's what you have the volunteers for, right? So you want to make sure, though, it's not you and then you have 30 volunteers. You need that buffer. You need you and like a team lead. And the team lead is handling the 30 folks. And the, the team lead would probably have, like for our three areas, I would have a team production team, a team production lead, a hosting lead team, and a street team lead. Right. And I would have those three people talk to the main team lead or whatever type you want to call it, who then talks to me. That's that buffer, because there's too many things going on um, to ensure that everybody understands what's going on. Right. Um, the last thing is oh, and I talked about the section thing. So these are different ways that you can ensure volunteers are understanding of your event. Um, you have that buffer between you. 
and that um, they're appreciative and they're enthusiastic about what is going on for the event. Because most people, when they're starting off, they don't have a, a super big team. And most times when you're seeing these productions or these events, they don't have a big team, but it looks like they have a big team. Most likely they use volunteers. Um, a lot of people, actually it was just like Lucinda was um, asking for volunteers for her event um, that's happening today or happened today. Um, or And I think she has another event coming up as well. And so sometimes you're in these groups where you're like, we need volunteers, we need volunteers. There's always plus for that. So even though you may not be the one putting on the event, I would, and you're having an event coming up, I would volunteer. Why? You get goodies. You get understanding of what you liked about being a volunteer, what you didn't like, and what you would do for your event to ensure that your volunteers are up to par, having fun, but still being um, productive and not um, and not lazy. Another thing is giving them idle time allows them to be on their cell phone at registration. And so that gets irritating to me because I feel like you're not in the zone, you're not there. So making sure that you, that's why that two hour time is great, especially for uh, registration. It's like the event starts at eight, registration starts at 7.30, have them from seven, seven to nine, and they're done. Thank you so much for your time. There's a box lunch with you. If you wanna stay for the event, you can. If you don't, thank you so much. We'll have a, a debriefing, right? telling you two hours is just a sweet spot. Now, if your event is a bit longer, then four hour shifts are better, but um, it does get a little bit more complicated. So those are the three reasons or three ways to utilize volunteers for your live event. Um, I would definitely not open up for questions. Even if your question is not about volunteers, you can ask me because it is hashtag ask Melissa Wednesdays. So I am going to see, oh, hey, Christopher, hey, Alvin. Um, those who did chime in and said, hey, and if you're watching from your timeline, I see you too. I see you too. <laughs> so ask questions. Let me know. Do you have a live event coming up? What's going on? I'm definitely excited to hear. Isn't it funny sometimes to see yourself talking? It's weird. <laughs> and I have a big glare. Sorry, guys, I have my glasses on, my hair is on. Totally different. My husband came in and interrupted with the printing. It's okay, though. <laughs> uh oh. I need to go back in. Okay. I don't know. I lost everything. Okay. So I'll stay in a little bit longer. If you have questions, I'll look here to see. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. If you're coming in, say hey. Tell me where you're from. Uh, let me know if you have a live event. If you're watching, put hashtag replay because you have to catch the content. Okay. Imperfect. All right, so I won't keep you guys because I'm not, I don't like to be long winded. So, again, if you don't know who I am and you're watching this, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey. And, um, well, who am I, right? So, my name is Melissa Jakes. I'm CEO and founder of Rescue Event Planning. Um, and I'm also known as the Olivia Pope of Live Events. I am so excited that you joined and listened. Give me your feedback. Let me know if you're having an event. Let me know if you're stuck. We do offer consulting um, packages. You can send me a message about that as well. But listen, those spots are like very limited. The whole month of September is totally booked. Every single weekend I have an event. I cannot fit anything else in. And October is starting to look the same way. I had the I have all the way up to, I think, the after the 11th of October, totally booked. So, yeah. Yep, yep, up until after the 11th. So, listen, let me know. Um, you can start getting on the calendar for November and December. Um, and we definitely have spots for uh, 2019, though people are already started booking. So, make sure you're ahead of that. So, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you're watching the replay, put hashtag replay. 
please still post your questions. I will go back and respond. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you later. Bye.